Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background or whatever interests you. And today I want to speak about uh, one aspect of Ukrainian life that is very commonly used, especially by those people who don't like Ukraine or who think that the support of Ukraine is too strong in the world, and that is corruption. First of all, I have to say that corruption is a problem for my country. Also, I have to say that corruption is a problem for many, many, many countries. I do agree that corruption in Ukraine perhaps is larger than in the majority of the EU countries. Why? Because the legislation, the system, I don't know, the history of those countries is longer normal. Ukraine, being post-Soviet, post-communist society, had a very tough period in the 90s. And 90s, from what I, I cannot tell you that <laughs> I remember that much about corruption in the 90s, but I knew, know that this was a very difficult, tough period that actually gave birth to such a serious problem as oligarchs. This is uh, something very characteristic of many post-Soviet countries. And of course, most of them live, work and influence Russia. And I would say that Russia is the mother of oligarchy as the heir ancestor of the Soviet Union. After the fall of the Soviet Union, because it was not the revolution, it was not the war, it was not the rebellion that led to the fall of the Soviet Union, it was just the fall. Many, many, many property was uh, stolen, substituted somehow. So lots of real criminals and bandits became billionaires because they were I cannot say brave enough because brave is a positive word I don't know they were um, like strong enough uh, no, they were not afraid and they were stealing buying plants factories fields territories blocks of houses political places all of that happened during the 90s so now many Ukrainian businessmen and many Russian businessmen and many Belarusian, Moldovian and so on, those who are uh, on the top of various Forbes ratings and so on, they cannot explain their wealth. And it looks really funny because when they talk about their youth, when they talk about the way they reached this level, um, they speak about some minor things and you realize that, for example, selling clothes or leather coats that were very popular back in the 90s you cannot build up <laughs> that much uh, earn a fortune so perhaps there were lots of illegal schemes and 90s they led to this blossom of uh, illegal uh, criminal businesses that were later legalized and these people became official owners official businessmen and owners of natural resources, various electricity companies, gas companies, and so on. What is also problematic, and it helped Russia a lot, that they are very much linked. So Ukrainian oligarchs had links to Russian oligarchs, and all that rotated around perhaps Moscow and so on. In Ukraine, people are different from Russians and you see the way we oppose various anti-democratic things. And I'm really, really, really proud of our civil society. And if you can invest in something in Ukraine, that is not that much about various state institutions, I don't know, other things, it's very important to invest in civic society because it is really active and it changes a lot. All the positive things that happen here in Ukraine were due to active citizens. As in any country, we don't have that many of them, but they, even like 25%, are enough to change a lot in the country. So, uh, with this oligarchy that was closely connected to Moscow, it, they had like, I don't know, they were selling gas, they were selling electricity, all of these things, they are interconnected and they tried to preserve normal relations. President Kuchma and President Yanukovych were perhaps the most important creators of uh, pro-Russian oligarchic policy. And Ukrainians 
we're against that, we're various Maidans, when we opposed that, when we changed presidents and tried to heal our society. So, uh, when you ask me about corruption in Ukraine, is it present? Yes. I, but honestly, when I think about my country, I don't think that it is like super, super corrupt when you compare it to some, I don't know, post-Soviet Asian countries, when you compare it to Russia, uh, because the more young generations appear, the less they are likely to follow these corrupt schemes. They report about that. They don't like it. They speak about people who live not according to the taxes they pay. They choose the jobs that offer them clean salaries, not the one that you receive an envelope and then you don't have a normal, I don't know, pension or social package or whatever. When I look at my students, for example, I cannot imagine them giving me bribe because First of all, I don't accept them. But secondly, these young people, they think in a totally different manner. Very often they think they receive service and they want this transparent, honest relations. Many spheres of Ukrainian life are now influenced by various European and American grant-given organizations. And I love it a lot. Our organization also works in this field and it allows transparency and you don't have to fed to be fed from an oligarch's hand if you want to run a media for example and you need money for that or if you want to organize a festival you don't have to glorify a certain politician uh, but of course if you would ask me what are the most problematic spheres i would call judicial one that's why our association with the european union and our movement towards the uh, european union is extremely important because it will demand these standards and very often Ukrainian parliament and Ukrainian presidents who are still influenced by some oligarchs they slow down the processes we had some problems with the prosecutors and um, that had to occupy some anti-corrupt positions and all of these things sometimes they slow down important integrational processes in Ukraine but at the same time people are very active and very attentive to these processes and they speak about that everywhere so in general if I could describe this situation with corruption or for example Zelensky has friends among his um, cabinet and this is also an example of corruption it's very typical to have dynasties of like lawyers uh doctors and this also can be described as corruption all of that is present but i cannot tell you that ukraine is ruled by corruption no uh, because many people who were at maidan at other revolutions many people who travel abroad uh, they are active and they want normal life and whenever they see a problem they report a problem we had the reform of police that changed a lot in the educational system there are lots of changes and perhaps the dirtiest sphere right now is actually the judicial one and it was a problem of president poroshenko that he did not change the courts and it led to problems in his life later and very often judges prosecutors they work like mafia you know supporting each other so perhaps this is the worst sphere here in ukraine uh, but in general, if I had to once again sum up the situation with oligar with corruption here, I would say that uh, it is fought. People fight against it. People speak about it. People have lots of initiative against it. And our civic society is very, very active. So we have a lot of work to do. But at the same time, we have to, we are working on that. There are real results, real changes. And uh, the society and taking into account this cruel war is getting healthier and healthier. But still, even Russian propaganda often uses corruption as uh, one of the like uh, negative features about Ukraine that like you don't have to give them money, you don't have to give them weapons because they are corrupt. Of course, it is not Russia to talk about that. Maybe, uh, I don't know, if Denmark speaks about that or the United Kingdom, it's more or less okay because they have fought the corruption and its level is lower in their countries, but it's not the Russia to judge us. And in the majority of cases, there are lots of situations when money do not go extremely properly or people make mistakes by not something the not the best. 
But I cannot say that this is a tendency, especially during this wartime, because people are very angry, people are very attentive, and our politicians, they try to keep an eye. Uh, they try to, they are afraid of people, I would say, honestly, because there are precedents when people went out on the streets and changed the situation in Ukraine, and I'm really, really, really proud of that. But of course, oligarchs still owe some media, they still try to influence uh, politicians and they still believe that people do not notice their actions and see them as businessmen. And very often, if there is a case against them, they try to describe it as political prosecution or something like that, but it's not. Anyway, if you're interested in Ukrainian oligarchs, I can introduce you to some but definitely the number of them is lower than in Russia or elsewhere and slowly they disappear because the society somehow like gets them away because with so many challenges, with so many dramatic situations, we do understand there are things we have to change and like we cannot, lots of things that we cannot accept after so many sacrifices in our modern history. So, uh, I do understand that corruption is a problem in Ukraine, but I have to warn you that it is a less serious problem than, for example, Russia uh, or, I don't know, uh, some uh, lack of planning that is very typical for Ukrainian politicians or other things. And that in general, all the strategies, all the programs that the world has for Ukraine to fight corruption Personally, subjectively, I would say they are working. And if I compare Ukraine at the times when I was at the university, for example, and Ukraine now, these are two different Ukraines. And I like the one I live now much better, of course, when we don't think about the war. Anyway, let me know. Would you like to know something more? Uh, but of course, not troll question, but like real question. So I will try to clarify that in my future videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for buying me coffees. Hope it's not corruption. <laughs> and of course, please subscribe to my channel if you like it, because I believe the world needs to know more about the situation in Ukraine and the way we are going to win this war. Slava Ukraini!